Thank you for viewing this talk. I'd like to present a basic overview of what we do to replace a hip. Specifically, I will discuss performing this surgery through a minimally invasive anterior approach. This talk is designed for general informational purposes only. You should discuss your particular care with me or your surgeon. Hip replacement is a reliable option for alleviating pain and increasing function in cases of severe joint destruction from arthritis. These x-rays give you an example of a normal hip on the left and a severely arthritic hip on the right. Notice the complete loss of space between the bones and the arthritic hip. This signifies complete loss of cartilage in that hip. The bones are now rubbing directly on each other, which causes pain and swelling. Regardless of the surgical approach taken to get to the hip joint, in a hip replacement, we place components to recreate the ball and socket of the joint. Pain from arthritis goes away because the bones are no longer rubbing against each other. The anterior approach refers to the surgical path we take to get to the hip joint. Many approaches exist. The anterior and posterior approaches are those most commonly used. The skin incisions for each approach are shown. The incision for the anterior approach is on the outer side of the front of the thigh. For a posterior approach, it is on the side of the thigh and back of the buttock. For a posterior approach, after the skin incision, the gluteus maximus muscle is split to access the hip. Tendons on the back of the hip then need to be cut to expose the hip joint. In an anterior approach, muscles are moved apart at a natural interval. We separate two muscles at the area of the red line on this image to get access to the hip joint. I like the anterior approach for most patients because I think it allows for an earlier, quicker recovery with less pain, probably because there is less muscle damage and soft tissue injury to recover from. The anterior approach is not new. It has been used for many decades in the United States and Europe. It has gained popularity in the past decade after a surgeon in California began promoting it and training surgeons. I gained significant experience with the anterior approach during fellowship in California learning from mentors who perfected it. In some places, the term Jiffy Hip is well known. This is a term trademarked by the makers of a special table we use to perform the surgery. What I believe is a major advantage of the anterior approach is the ability to use live x-ray to see exactly what I am doing during a surgery. In other approaches, the patient is lying on their side for the procedure. It is therefore very difficult to get good, high-quality images. In the anterior approach, the patient is lying on their back, and every step of the way I can check exactly what I am doing under live x-ray. This ensures appropriate placement of the components, as well as ensuring appropriate recreation of the length of the limb. During all hip replacement procedures, components are placed similarly to recreate the ball and socket hip joint. The arthritic hip socket is reamed with a circular reamer and a cup is placed. A special liner is placed in this cup. Next, the arthritic ball of the femur is removed and a component is placed within the femoral bone itself. A special ball is placed on this component and this recreates the ball and socket hip joint. It can't be overstated how powerful it is to be able to directly visualize every step of the operation. This allows us to more accurately recreate the appropriate hip anatomy, including the length of the leg after replacement. It also allows us to place the components in positions and angles that we know are best for the patient to avoid complications such as dislocation and to minimize the wear of the components, increasing the expected lifespan of the components placed. This is extremely important for the long-term outcome of the hip replacement. We do many things before, during, and after an anterior approach hip replacement to make the recovery as smooth as possible. In general, most people have minimal to mild pain after the surgery. Therapy begins immediately after surgery and begins with walking with the use of a walker. Hospital stays range from discharge on the day of surgery to a few days in the hospital, depending on the patient and progress with therapy. Therapy continues after discharge for weeks to months. Getting back to work is variable depending on your job and recovery, but I tell most patients that they should be able to return to work within about four weeks. Some are much sooner and some are a few weeks later. I hope you've learned some of the basics about hip replacement and the anterior approach for hip replacement. 
Come see me or your surgeon for a full discussion about this procedure. You can find more information about this topic through my group website or through the websites of professional organizations such as the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons and the American Association of Hip and Knee Surgeons.